I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Good morning. Welcome to First Presbyterian Church on another one of these just beautiful fall days. It's uh, wonderful to have you here to share in worship, to be the gathered people of God, and the people watching at home to be part of our extended uh, people of God. Uh, just a couple of announcements uh, for you this morning. A special welcome to somebody who's becoming familiar, uh, Jay Kozarinski. Uh, it's really good to have you here, Jay. Thank you. Uh, this, uh, in a way, concludes our fall, or excuse me, our summer worship season, and we begin fall worship next Sunday. But a lot of the things are going to stay the same. We're going to continue to worship at 10 o'clock. We're going to continue with this shorter intergenerational service that seems to be working real well, real well for us uh, during uh, this season. However, next Sunday is World Communion Sunday, so we will be celebrating communion, and we will do it in a way that as health precautions, we have little uh, juice cups with a wafer on top that are sealed, and so they will be out on the tables where the bulletins are, and you will pick one up uh, when you come in, and so you'll have communion elements there that only you have touched, so we'll celebrate that next Sunday. And also, we were not able to worship on Easter Sunday, which means we weren't able to do our Easter flowers. So we rescheduled that for next Sunday, and we'll be doing fall flowers. So it's going to be wonderful next Sunday to be able to share communion and to see all of those fall flowers up here. So that will be happening uh, next Sunday. Um, we are going to begin to uh, have children and youth ministry uh, during worship service. So after the first scripture reading... The kids will leave with Brenda, who are here, and the youth who are here will leave with Lisa, and they'll have a 20, 25-minute uh, program uh, for them. So that's something new. We're trying, sort of living into this, to figure out what works and what doesn't, and I appreciate our staff's willingness to experiment with things and your patience as we try things. Some things work and some things don't. So again, kids and youth. We'll leave following the first scripture reading today for a special kind of gathering for them, of course, following health precautions. Our backpack mission for Sharon Schools, uh, our goal was ten dollars to $12,000 for this school year. Of course, you know we're feeding 350 kids. It's a community mission. We've got a small part of it. $65,000, $70,000 a year is what it costs. Our goal was ten dollars to $12,000. we have raised thirteen. dollars Thank you very much, $13,000. We've got about 20 volunteers. We're looking for some more so we can divide again into four teams. Uh, one team uh, um, packs on a Tuesday a month. And so if you're interested in volunteering, of course, practicing, practicing health precautions down at the warehouse, uh, please uh, sign up, give me a call, um, and let us know that. This time I'd invite uh, Joe Dillinger to come forward to share a minute for mission. Joe? Hello, good morning. As uh, September draws to an end and we look towards October, uh, the mission team would like to continue our focus on hunger awareness by designated October 18th as Blessing Box Sunday. We will be collecting non-perishable food items and other small necessities to be placed inside the Blessing Box, which is located inside the island of the East parking lot. In case you do not know the story behind the Blessing Box, uh, the Boy Scouts Troop 3 installed the Blessing Box in early August as part of a Eagle Scout project. Uh, the Blessing Box is a small outdoor pantry and people in the community can give and take items as needed. Uh, the main goal of the Blessing Box is to provide another source of sustainability for people who are struggling and need. With the coronavirus pandemic, the need has only increased in the area, and the Blessing Box can help alleviate uh, the need for those, in, uh, for those who are struggling. Uh, I recently saw a post on Facebook. Uh, it was from the Mom to Mom group. There was a girl holding up a sign that read, we are all in this together. And I believe that is the message that God wants us to see at this time. It is up to us to help each other make it through these tough times. 
So mark your calendars for October 18th. Uh, please bring in non-perishable food items and other small necessities if you're able to. If you're watching service at home and you'd like to contribute, you can send in monetary donations to the church with the designation of Blessing Box, and myself or someone else on the mission team will go and purchase those items. Thank you. From Psalm 1, happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or take the path that sinners tread or sit in the seat of scoffers. They are like trees planted by streams of water which yield their fruit in its season and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper.
please join me in prayer. Holy, holy, holy Lord, you are a God almighty. You are refuge and strength. You are the rock and the foundation in whom we trust. Lord, I give you thanks for the gentle notes of the piano and the violin this morning, how they attune us to the breath of your Holy Spirit at play among us. Help us to still our hearts and our minds, our anxious thoughts, and be tuned in to your good news this day through scripture and through reflection on the word and sermon. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Our first lesson is from Isaiah chapter 28. Therefore, hear the word of the Lord, you scoffers who rule this people in Jerusalem. Because you have said, we have made a covenant with death, and with Sheol we have an agreement. When the overwhelming scourge passes through, it will not come to us, for we have made lies our refuge, and in falsehood we have taken shelter. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, See, I am laying in Zion a foundation stone, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. One who trusts will not panic. And I will make justice the line and righteousness the plummet. Hail will sweep away the refuge of lies and waters will overwhelm the shelter. Then your covenant with death will be annulled, and your agreement with Sheol will not stand. When the overwhelming scourge passes through, you will be beaten down by it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The sermon title today is Peace in a Storm, and I can tell you, if nothing else, the music has created a sense of peace today, hasn't it? Just absolutely beautiful. The second scripture reading is from the Gospel of Luke, the end of the sixth chapter, and in this chapter, the writer has gathered together a lot of Jesus' teaching, so this parable comes at the end of that teaching. And Jesus says this, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I tell you? I will show you what someone is like who comes to me, hears my word, and acts on it. That one is like a man building a house who dug deeply and laid the foundation on rock. When the flood arose, the river burst against the house, but it couldn't shake it because it had been built well. But the one who hears and does not not act is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. When the river burst against it, immediately it fell, and great was the ruin of that house. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you grew up in the church, you know this parable from a children's song, don't you? The lines go like this, the wise man built his house upon a rock, the rains came down, the floods came up, and, but the house on the rock stood firm. Verse 2, the foolish man built his house upon the sand, the rains came down, the floods came up, and the house on the sands fell flat, right? Verse 3, so build your house on the rock, Jesus Christ. You may also know the themes of this parable from a children's story, The Three Little Pigs. In that story, you know, each builds a house, straw, sticks, or bricks. Two of the pigs choose the easier way, straw and sticks. Their homes go up quickly. They're pleased. All seems good. I mean, after all, what could happen? A third chooses a different way, a harder way. He, of course, builds with bricks. He's still working when his friends are out playing. He's determined because he thinks you never know what might happen. Well, of course, what happens is a wolf, there's always a wolf, it's part of life. So when the big bad wolf comes to call with a huff and a puff, the houses of straw and sticks fall flat. But the brick house stands firm. Brick is like building on a rock. The story, of course, is a moral tale. We tell it and we hear it and we read it to teach an important life lesson. Shortcuts and easier ways often fail. Indeed, in real life, there are big bad wolves, and they do come to call. So choose wisely, build smartly, have a long view Things always happen. It's more than just a children's story, isn't it? Jesus tells his story and the people listening to him tell his story about rock and sand. Don't know about the three little pigs, but they know all about building a home. It's no small thing. It's not put up with an army of Amish builders. There's no power equipment, power supplied by a person's back and arms and legs. Building is a lot of work, it's hard work, and it takes time. And everyone listening to Jesus tell his parable knows that you want to dig down to rock. On hilltops, you might have to dig down a little, maybe a couple of inches, and in lower areas, you have to dig down more, maybe a couple feet, maybe even more than that. No small thing when you're using a pick and a shovel and a wheelbarrow. And the ground there (coughs) is often clay. In the summer, when it does not rain in the summer, that's when you want to dig and build. But it's also when the temperatures are hot, right? And that clay is baked hard. So it's tempting to talk yourself into an easier way. It is so hot, the ground is hard. What could really happen if I just stop digging and start building now? 
clay seems as good as rock. But in the late fall and the winter, the rains come there. They always do. And that rock-hard clay becomes softer, becomes stickier, becomes soupier. And it starts to run in dirty brown rivers in hard rains. And of course, down comes the house, not built on the rock. Everyone listening to Jesus knew that, and everyone there knew people, maybe some people there listening to Jesus who had lost the house by not building on the rock. Jesus isn't making this stuff up. It really happens. Rather, he's drawing on the experiences and the stories all the people there knew. Jesus' point is that what we believe in, what we really believe in, The stories we really trust shape our choices and our hopes and our lives. And Jesus wants to make sure that we know that faith, faith in Jesus and faith in Jesus' words, his teachings, is all about a way of life. Building a life. And it's often different than the world around us. And as Jesus tells the story, it sounds a little bit like Straw and sticks and bricks, doesn't it? Rock or dirt, Jesus asks. What do you choose? One is harder and one is easier. But the wolves, the the storms, they do come. They come to us all. And one will stand and the other will fall and it will be washed away. What do you trust? What do you believe? How do you build your life? And then there is also something deeper going on here, something amazing. In that difficult prophecy from Isaiah 28 that Lisa read for us, the prophet is condemning Israel's religious and political leaders. You see, what's going on is as the massive Assyrian armies are approaching, the leaders of Israel have sold their souls to the promise of the Egyptians that they will come and help fight the Assyrians. But as the storm of the Assyrian army rages against them, Isaiah says, the Egyptians will not come. The leaders are trusting the wrong power. They're building on dirt, building on sand, building in the wrong place. And that hope they have will fall flat, Isaiah says. Rather, their only true hope is in, what did he say? The foundation stone, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone, he's saying God's own self. And those who trust that stone will find peace when the storm of the Assyrian armies come. And in the end, they will be the ones who stand. And as Jesus tells his story of rock and sand, this prophecy of Isaiah 28 is quietly and deeply in the background. And Jesus is saying that this promise of God from Isaiah 28, this presence of God, this foundation stone, this tested stone, this precious cornerstone, is found in him. And it's found in his teaching. Jesus is saying that he is the stone. He is the rock. He is the presence of God in storms. Trust him and his way. Amazing. The late NBA superstar Kobe Bryant could tell instantly when a basketball rim was off just the least little bit. 
When he would be practicing shooting, his body would tell him. The rim should be 10 feet high, but Bryant could tell if it was a quarter of an inch, an eighth of an inch, or even less off. And what would happen is practice would stop, and somebody would get a ladder, and they'd get a tape measure, and they would measure. And Kobe Bryant was always right. But he didn't need to measure, he just knew. And he knew because he practiced shooting. He practiced shooting days upon days, years upon years, a lifetime from a very young age, shooting hundreds of shots a day, if not thousands on some days. Shooting and shooting fine-tuned him over time to know, to know when the rim was off, he could feel it. Kobe Bryant just knew. Our summer sermon series on Jesus' parables is coming to a close today. Through our reading and preaching of these parables, we have been invited to believe, to ponder Jesus' stories, and to have our souls shaped in a certain way, the way of a follower of Jesus. Over these weeks of sermons, we've called it a third way, not retreat from the world, and not following the ways of the world, but rather living a third way, Jesus' way in the world, in a way living the prayer that we pray so often, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven through me and through you. Stories that shape a soul, a third way, that's what we have been up to all summer. It's been like Kobe Bryant Parable after parable after parable, so that we just know the way of Jesus down deep in our bones. And storms and big bad wolves, we know about that too, don't we? They are a part of life, and in 2020, they seem to be a part of all of our lives in a big way. The storm of the pandemic has raged against us. Illness, deaths, masks, fear, lost jobs, lost businesses, dimmed hopes, smaller lives. And the storm of social upheaval has raged against us, all around us. We become aware of the evils of racism and we know that they have to change and watch the evils of looting and violence destroy neighborhoods. There is the storm of global warming. The west is burning and the southeast faces hurricane after hurricane. And over the next month, we will face a political storm unlike any other, splitting communities and friendships and families. But here's the thing. Like Kobe Bryant shooting those shots hour after hour, day after day, year after year, Jesus' parables shape a soul, a heart, a mind, a character so that we just know, we just know what it is to live with peace and justice, and kindness, and goodness, and hope. More than so much of what is going on around us. Souls shaped by Jesus' parables just know. They feel it. And it's lived out, lived out in the summer sun, and lived out in the storms of difficult seasons. The parables... Build a soul on the rock. And I believe it will stand. Peace in the storms. And standing when the storms come to an end. Amen.
Let us pray together. Indeed, great is your faithfulness. Faithful God, a sure foundation, a solid rock. We come to the end of this sermon series in a difficult time. It's a stormy season. It seems much rages against us. It's an uncomfortable time, an anxious time, a frightening time. We pray that the parables of Jesus may build souls on the rock, a third way that neither retreats from the world nor bends to the world, but rather a way of life that stands tall, trusting your great faithfulness. And may that way of life grant us peace amidst the storms all around us. We give you thanks for the mission of this church in times of great need. We give you thanks for the completion of the Fuller House and Farrell. It's now ready for a new family. We give you thanks for the backpack food program, getting food to hungry kids. We give you thanks for the blessing box out in our parking lot, getting food to our hungry neighbors. We pray that you would continue to create in us the soul of Jesus, a way of life that changes the world. This morning, we would pray for Trent Littman and his card connection mission at Badger Middle School, a mission of kids getting cards to residents in nursing homes across the country. A big vision. It's amazing how and where your kingdom breaks out. We'd pray for our friends today. We'd pray for Ella Lee, for Amanda Griffin. For Frank Cesario, for Mark Franz, for Nancy Vermeyer. We pray for Dr. Carrie Schroer, for Nancy Mertz, for Susan Sackis, for Susan McKinney. We pray for Carol Robinson and Sonia Wiley, for Ed Benedict, for Michael McKeel, for Joe Dillinger and his upcoming surgery. We pray for Bob Clausen and his family. And hear us together as we share the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As our worship service draws to a close, we want to again extend thanks to our guest uh, violinist, Jay Kosierinski. Jay. Thank you, Stephen. We can make him a regular, so it's good. And Nicole, thank you. You're such a fine accompanist. 
Just a couple of reminders. Next uh, Sunday, of course, is World Communion Sunday. It's also Flower Sunday. Should be beautiful uh, here. Again, you're invited to exit, if you would please, out the back of the sanctuary. It's easier for us to maintain social distancing. Unless you need to use the elevator, then of course, feel free uh, to, uh, to uh, do that. The charge is simply this. Big bad wolves do come to call. Storms do rage. Build your house on the rock, Jesus Christ. Receive now God's blessing. And now may the peace of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, grant us peace this day and every day. Amen. Mm -hmm.